This is a message that's been on my heart for some time. I do think that this is a message that is specifically to help us begin 2023, beginning a new year. It's absolutely critical that the first part of your year that we get that part right. And so I wanna to talk to you, if I were to give it a title, it would be the sound of encouragement. In 1 Corinthians 14 and verse eight, it says, if the trumpet makes an unclear sound, how will we be ready for battle? When I think about January, that's what it's all about. You're making a clear sound to the rest of your year. How do I get ready for 2023? I make a clear sound in January. I'm clear about what I want. I'm clear about where I'm going. All of us have these times where we've started off the year and we said, you know, I'll start this. I'll start this positive discipline. I'll start this positive habit. Somewhere along the way, it just drops off. Or maybe we said, I'm going to stop that. Maybe it's a negative pattern. Uh, maybe it's a sin or just some bad habit. I'm done. I don't want to go into this next year with that thing. And then it doesn't take too long. And all of a sudden you're picking that bad habit, that sin back up. And what happens is no sustained change leaves all of us feeling defeated and discouraged, like nothing's ever going to change. And so when you go into a new year, you have one of two options. Number one, you make a decision. This is going to be a year of victory, or you just say it's gonna be another year like it's always been, and more than likely it's gonna be another year of defeat. So I wanna challenge you, let's use this January to send a clear sound to the rest of our year I don't know what battles are in my future, but I'm asking God to help me be ready for it. I'm not looking for a fight. I hope there's no fights in 2023, but if a fight comes looking, I wanna be ready. In Numbers chapter 10, verses one through nine, it gives us this incredible story that I believe makes the scripture that we read in 1 Corinthians make so much more sense. This is verse one, it says, the Lord said to Moses, make two trumpets of hammered silver and use them for the calling of the community together for having the camp set out. When both are sounded, the whole community is to assemble before you at the entrance of the tent of meeting. We can drop down to verse six. It goes on to say that at the sounding of a second blast, the camps are to set out and the blast will be a signal for the setting out. To gather the assembly, blow the trumpets, but not the signal for setting out. In verse eight, it says, the sons of Aaron, the high priest, are to blow the trumpets. This is to be a lasting ordinance for you and the generations to come. When you go into the battle in your own land against the enemy who is oppressing you, sound a blast on the trumpets. Then you'll be remembered by the Lord your God and rescued from your enemies. I wanna use that text to give you three thoughts on being the 8%. The first thing I want us to look at is part of being the 8% is you've gotta settle in your heart that two are better than one. The text that we read began with two trumpets of hammered silver. Two trumpets, not one. We have this trumpet that's here, they gave it to me. And the scripture says, that you have to have two trumpets because two is better than one. The Bible actually says it like this, that if one falls and there's no one there to lift them up, you have to have people around you that will lift you as you're making commitments, as you're making resolutions, as you're saying, I want to make this change. I want to, I want to be different in this area. Who is in your world that if you fail or, or if you've, falter in some way, they can be there to help pick you back up. The Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. Matthew 18 and verse 19 says, again, I say to you that if two of you will agree on anything on the earth, it shall be done for them by my Father, which is in heaven. It's important that you get other people in your life. Do not do whatever you're going into, part of the 8% is you've got to make a decision I'm not going to go it this year alone. Jesus would send out his disciples, not one by one, but two by two. And there's a reason for that. You cannot make a clear sound alone. Accountability is a part of your walk with God. 
And sometimes we just don't have integrity in an area of our life. We, we haven't established a discipline or we've let disciplines go or maybe apathy's entered in. And because of the lack of integrity, we have to introduce accountability to our life. Bring someone into your life that's got victory in the area you're trying to see that change. The trumpet is a symbol. It's a symbol of triumph. It's a symbol of overcoming. It's a symbol of dominion and authority. Defeat or victory really does come down to this one idea. Who is a voice in your life? Who have you allowed to be the dominant voices in your life? I can tell you for me, there's no way I can go into 2023 without strong, triumphant people that will lift me and encourage me. I need people that walk in spiritual authority because they faced hell and they've been back and back is important. I love the fact that it's not just two trumpets, it's two trumpets of hammered silver. In other words, you need somebody that's been under the hammer for just a little bit. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 29 says, is not my word like a fire declares the Lord and like a hammer. I want to know if someone's going to be a voice in my life, if they're going to be the person that walks with me, that they're under the hammer of God's Word. I don't want their opinion. I, I don't need them to worry about being politically correct with me. I don't want them to be so sensitive that they're afraid, or, or I don't want to be so sensitive that they're afraid to be offensive of me, to me. I want someone that's going to speak God's Word. Trumpets are made of hammered silver. Too many people go into a new year, well, I don't like this, and well, I believe I was born like this, or I have this leaning, or I have this, this uh, you know, personality, or I feel like this. The problem is, is when you live like that, it's an unclear sound. And the reason so many of God's people are not ready for a battle is because they live with I feel, or my opinion, or what the world sa says, or what the culture says. That's not how you do it. Give me the hammer. God, use your word to make me and mold me and shape me. What's the hammer say to the silver? One of us is changing. And I can tell you this, it's not the hammer. And the church is called to be a trumpet of hammered silver. That's our goal. We're going to trumpet you. This church is going to trumpet you. Maybe it's a prayer partner that every single week after service you're going to come forward or you're going to call or you're going to engage someone and they're going to trumpet you. Maybe it's a small group leader. Maybe it's jumping into Summit. I don't know exactly what it looked like or maybe the serving teams you're on. You need to talk with some of the leaders of those teams, some of the service leaders of those teams. But make sure that you get someone involved in the areas you're wanting to see change. Be clear. I want to see this change. Let them know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you ask me. I'm going to let you get into my business about this thing and hold me accountable according to the standard of God's word. That's the first key to being the 8%. Two are better than one. Secondly, in the text that we read, it said the trumpet sound is a call to action. It said it's a sound that pulls people together. When the trumpet sound, it's a time to go. It announces it's time for us to get moving. It's also a time where you have to say, okay, when that sound goes off, I'm ready to go into battle. It says that you're going to have enemies in your life. You're going to have things that try to oppress you. And the goal of the trumpet being sound is it announces to you, okay, no longer are you going to just stay under this oppression. It's your time to get into the battle. The Bible says God's voice is like a trumpet. I want you to listen that John the Beloved was banished to the island of Patmos. And it says the reason he was banished was because of the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Think about that. The Word of God, they, they arrested him, they considered him a criminal, criminal because of the Word of God that he preached and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And then it goes on to say in Revelation 1 and verse 10, on the Lord's day, John was caught up in the Spirit he heard a loud voice behind him like a trumpet because God's voice is like a trumpet. 1 Corinthians 15, 52, it says, In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trumpet will sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we will all be changed. 
What I want you to see is that God's voice is like a trumpet to us. In Numbers chapter 10, right on the heels of, of Moses dying, Joshua enters the picture and we begin to read about this idea from Numbers chapter 10. And if you study when the children of Israel left Egypt before they went into the promised land and you read the story, there's 42 different times the children of Israel would stop in the wilderness. And then 42 times they would hear a trumpet. When they would hear that trumpet, they would pull together. They would realize it's time to move. It's time to engage and fight whatever enemy or oppressor is trying to stop us. And if you think about that, over the course of 40 years, 42 times the trumpet sounded and said move. But of all of those years, all the 48 year, or 40 years, 38 of those years were spent in one spot called Kaddish or Sinai. So one year they were in the wilderness and they got to Sinai. There they spent 38 years before another year they were able to move on. So before and after Kadesh, the people of God were always on the move. They didn't spend very much time before the trumpet sounded and they would move. So you can see that God's people are designed to be moving. But there at Kadesh or Sinai was the place that they got stuck. It was a place of silence. For 38 years, there was no clear sound. There was no trumpet. They were stuck. And the Bible says the reason why is an entire generation ended up dying off in the wilderness. The reason that they died off is because God said, I'm going to go silent on my people. And the reason he did is because they were just constantly negative, complaining, murmuring. They got tired of the trumpet. They were intimidated by God's voice. They would say things to Moses like, you can go up the mountain and hear from God. We're going to stay here. You can hear from God for us. I think that's the saddest verse in all your Bible, that you can hear from God for me. It's not how it works. God's voice is behind all of us, and it's like a trumpet. It's not in front of us. If it was in front of us, that loud trumpet would say, stop. But it's behind us because God's voice is there to push us. It's there to encourage us. Keep on moving. Keep on reaching. Keep on believing. Don't stop. If you stop, that's when the devil pours concrete on you and you become a statue. So the key in the kingdom of God is you've got to allow the sound of encouragement to say whatever happens in 2023, let's not stop. Let's not get stuck. Don't allow negativity or murmuring or your past to get a hold of you. The second key to being part of the 8% is you've got to make a decision. I'm going to take real clear action steps one foot in front of another, this year I'm going to be on the move and I'm going to keep taking action. I love how James says it, says it like this, you show me your faith by what you say and I'll show you my faith by what I do. Number three, it's very important that you remember that we're chosen instruments. Acts chapter 9 and verse 15, God told Ananias that Paul is my chosen instrument, and I'm gonna use him to proclaim my name to the Gentiles. What God was saying to Ananias is you're going to have to help Paul. He's got a bad past. He's made a lot of mistakes. He's done a lot of messed up things. And the way you're gonna help Paul with his past is I want you to give him a picture of his future. I want you to talk to him about what I'm calling him to, the, the difference that I'm calling him to make in the world. And the truth is until Ananias talked to Paul about his future until he talked to him about you're a chosen instrument by God until that happened Paul was blinded by his potential but the moment he began to talk to Paul about his future the scales fell off Paul's eyes listen one of the things about silver that I read was that silver is sensitive to light in other words it's it's the best reflection known to man so they take silver and they use it in mirrors. They also use it in uh, photography. A mirror is a place we go take an honest look at ourselves. It's a place where we take an honest look at where we're at in life. Whereas a picture or photography, I think 
when it comes to our faith, our faith is designed just not to look at where I've been or where I am, but it takes a picture of my desired future. If I don't like what I see in the mirror of 2022, then I have to take a picture of the future I want in 2023. And faith gets a picture. Where am I going? What kind of man, what kind of woman do I want to be? And it's not just any kind of picture. It should be a divinely inspired picture. It should really be a Christ-like picture. The Bible says in John 1 that Jesus was the Logos, the Word. That word Logos is where we get the word Logo from. That Jesus was the Logo of Heaven. He was an exact reflection of the Father, and He came to this planet to give us a picture of what God is like. I want you to think about it like this. When you look up into the sky at night and you see the moon, you and I both know that the moon has no light in and of itself, but that the moon is a reflection of the sun. That because of the sun, the moon shines. Well, the Bible teaches us that the earth was designed to reflect heaven. Of course, after the fall, we, we begin to no longer reflect heaven. And so earth begins to get darker and darker and darker. That's why we're to pray that it be on earth as it is in heaven. We're just asking God to help us come back into alignment so we can reflect on earth how it is in heaven. In the same way that the moon is a reflection of the sun, and that the earth is a reflection of heaven, you and I are to be a reflection of God. You and I are made in the image of God. And so I wanna challenge you as we go into this next year to get a picture, allow your faith right now to begin to get a picture of the kind of changes that you wanna make. What do you wanna see God do this year? Get that picture in your heart. Maybe write it in the Be the 8% journal. Maybe give some details to it. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20 says there's instruments of gold and silver and they must be kept clean to be used for a special purpose. Because the thing about silver is it doesn't corrode. It's like gold. It's rare. And the way silver is worked is it has to be purified. And to be purified, it has to be kept clean and polished or it tarnishes. And the same way in our life, corruption the pollution of this world over time just begins to tarnish us. And just like with the trumpet, if it's tarnished, it hinders and it distorts the sound. If we're tarnished, if we're allowing the pollution to, of this world to get a hold of us, it impacts the sound that we make. We just aren't clear about where we're going, clear about uh, the direction we're heading in life. So we've got to say, God, in January, during this fast, Keep us clean. Keep my life clean so I can send a clear sound into the rest of my year. I need God to breathe on me. You need God to breathe on you. We need God to breathe through us. We are His chosen instruments is what He said. And I must be clean to be clear. If I'm not clean, I'm going to be unclear. I'm going to send an unclear sound. What's going to happen? I will not be ready for the battle. So we fast for 21 days because during this 21 days, we're God saying, God, help us be clean so we can send a clear sound. As we wrap up our time together, I wanna to pray for you in just a second. And as we prepare to do that, I want you to think about what's called the Feast of Trumpets. It's the first day of the new year on a Jewish calendar. It represents that God is a God of new beginnings. This feast for the Hebrew people is a prayerful feast. It's a reflective feast. And the nucleus of this feast is to acknowledge as I go into a new year, I must consider not everyone is going to come out of 2023. It's a sobering feast. It's, it's saying I'm not only getting ready for a new year, I'm getting ready mentally for it to be my last year. The main question everyone asks during this feast is what if this is my last year on earth? What do I want it to look like? I know that sometimes like, oh, that's kind of a depressing way to end. No, it's not because nothing brings more clarity than you taking a real look at the brevity of life. For all of us, it's the same. And if I want to make a clear sound, or maybe I should say it like this, if I want to hear the clear trumpet sound of God behind me saying this year is going to be different, 
This is going to be a new year. This is going to be a year of victory, not defeat. This is going to be a year I'm going to be part of the 8% that gets the victory, not the 92% that don't. I have to remember God's chosen me. I'm his chosen vessel. He wants to use us, every single one of you. He wants to use you this year to be the 8%. And you got to make a decision. I'm not going back to 2022. I'm not going back to those habits. I'm not going back to, to those uh, undisciplined ways. But instead, I'm asking God to speak to my life, speak to my situation, speak to the areas I struggle with, and help me take action and move forward in Jesus' mighty name. 21 days of prayer and fasting. Next week, we're going to go into it together. You don't want to do it alone. Let's do it together. Two are better than one in Jesus' name. And let's consider this year. If this was our last year on earth, what do we want it to look like? Is a church, if we've got one more year, of course, we'll, we believe we'll all have many more years. But yet to get clear on who we're called to be, we have to consider that we're not always promised another year. So let's make this one count. Let's make 2023 count in Jesus name. And my prayer is that that voice behind you would be a sound of encouragement that the best days are in front of you. Your best years are in front of you. Your most victorious years are in front of you in the mighty name of Jesus. So Father, we give you 2023. This is our new year and we give January to you. We give this next season to you and we thank you as we do that, that you're going to bless the rest of the year. I see February blessed and I see March and April and May and June and July. I see the rest of this year blessed. You know what we're going to be up against. You know the battles we're going to fight. Lord, let us hear the clear sound so we'll be ready for the battle. In Jesus' name, amen.